Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today's lecture is on section 7.1 on the subject of angles and their measures. So to start, we're going to start with the definition. The definition is going to involve things that are straight. There are three different portions of straight things that we can talk about. In order, these are referred to as a line segment, a line, okay, that wasn't in order, uh, and the middle one is the thing of interest to us. That is referred to as a ray. Now, a ray is the only one of these three objects that isn't um, symmetric in some sort of nature. The ray has a finite stop on one side, and it continues to infinity on the other side. It is for that purpose that we're going to give a special name to this side. And that side of the ray is going to be referred to as the vertex of the ray. Now, anytime two rays share a common vertex, looks something along these lines. When two rays share a common vertex, it creates what is known as an angle. An angle is a way of measuring a rotation of an object. So imagine that we are at the vertex and we rotate from one direction to the other direction. Now, in order to do so, we indicate the direction of the rotation with a little curved arrow on the inside. There are special names for these sides then. The side that we rotate from is called the initial side. And the side that we rotate to is referred to as the terminal side. We always go from initial to terminal. Now, just because we have a particular angle doesn't mean that there aren't multiple ways that we can rotate from an initial side to a terminal side. For example, if I were to indicate an angle such as this one, the most natural rotation might seem to be something along these lines. However, rotating from initial side to terminal side in the opposite direction would work as well. Or, in the rotation I like to refer to as the dizzy toddler, we could also have something rotate around a whole bunch of times before eventually uh, landing on wherever that terminal side happens to be. Now with that in mind, the majority of the angles that we're going to be dealing with are going to be called angles that are in standard position. So this is going to involve something in the Cartesian plane. Ooh, that looks kind of weird. So standard position is when an angle is put into the Cartesian plane where the initial side is always going to be the positive x-axis. The vertex is going to be at the origin. So vertex equals origin and initial side is going to be the positive x-axis. Now because it's so common to have things that are in standard position, what we'll typically do is just not even copy down what the initial side is. It'll just be assumed that that would be the initial side for something that is in standard position. <laughs> now with that in mind, there are a couple different kinds of angles that we can talk about. This would be considered a quadrant one angle because its terminal side is located within quadrant one. We also make ourselves a quadrant 2 angle, a quadrant 3 angle, or a quadrant 4 angle by putting our terminal side in the appropriate quadrants. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So, without even writing where the initial side is, I'm going to put a terminal side in quadrant 2. This would be considered to be a quadrant 2 angle. We'll use Q for quadrant. Quadrant 2 angle. A quadrant 3 angle will be in this direction, quadrant 3 angle. We can do a rotation like this, for example. And finally, we could also do a quadrant 4 angle, which would look kind of like this, quadrant 4 angle. Now you'll notice that as I'm indicating the rotation from initial side to terminal side, I keep rotating in the same direction, which is sort of this uh, counterclockwise motif. There is a reason for this. If an angle is counterclockwise, 
we consider that to be a positive rotation. And by the same token, if we were to say a clockwise rotation, then we are referring to a negative rotation. So all of the angles that I have indicated up here are all referring to positive angles. However, if we wanted to have a little bit of fun with this, similar to what we did on our previous page, I could indicate an angle like this. I could indicate an angle like this. So in the first case, the angle that I have drawn in the darker ink here, this would be considered a positive angle. And in red, this would be considered a negative angle. However, regardless of whether we're using the positive angle or the negative angle, if they have both the same initial side as well as terminal side, we refer to these two angles as being co-terminal. Prefix co meaning together, terminal meaning that they terminate at the same direction. So regardless of positive or negative, if they have the same initial side and they have the same terminal side, we refer to the angles as co-terminal. The most common notation that we're going to be using for these angles is going to be a lowercase Greek letter. I wanted to familiarize you with some of the Greek letters that get used pretty frequently for these. I would say the most common Greek letter that you're going to see for an angle is going to be the Greek letter theta. Uh, additionally, we could see things like alpha or beta. Eventually when we start working with triangles we're going to see three angles in those so we'll introduce the th third Greek letter as well. It'll be gamma. Um, other good ones, you guys probably know this one already, pi. I have a friend who always yells at me, she speaks Greek, she says it's pi. Uh, another good one, the last Greek letter is omega. I've always referred to Omega as Greek booty because, well, and hopefully it's obvious reasons. Um, yeah, that seems like a good start. 